Now, throughout the events of the sequel trilogy, one of the main topics was about the character of Rey, exactly who she was and where she came from. There were a lot of back and forth scenarios that both J.J. Abrams and Ryan Johnson were going through and trying to really figure out and pinpoint exactly how to handle this particular character that was used in a specific way by J.J. in the long run with Episode Nine that a lot of fans didn't really seem to agree with fully. This is Mike Zero. Subscribe if you're new and like this video to see future Star Wars updates. I'm also on Twitter at MikeZero1. I thank you also very much for the great and kind support. Now, let's get right into the subject here involving Daisy Ridley. Now, we know that she's been low-key promoting the 2025 Star Wars movie, which makes you wonder... Is it going to be a 2025 movie anymore, given that there is a current writer's strike happening right now, and we had Stephen Knight just about finished with the script, he was just weeks away from finishing it, so there's not much more to complete. It really makes you wonder exactly what's going to happen with the release date now, but we'll have to wait and see. But what Daisy Ridley was able to tease regarding Rey in the upcoming 2025 Star Wars film, as well as just the upcoming lore that's going to be expanded through books, comics, novels, etc. That's going to really travel more into the backstory of Rey in ways that fans would never even imagine. However, alright, that brings us to Daisy Ridley. Now, with Bob Iger returning and rethinking his strategy for Star Wars and shifting things back to movies again as the main focus, in a recent interview with actress Daisy Ridley, she recently went on to tease new things about the 2025 Star Wars film, led by Stephen Knight, that is set to feature Rey. Daisy went on to state the following into the community and tease specific details. Well, I'm actually going over the finalization of the script right now with Steven and how he is almost done. He's only a couple of weeks out from finishing this thing, and I am just thrilled with what he is doing with my character arc in the movie, and that's going to explore new secrets of Rey's backstory and her identity. I know fans keep asking me what's that all about, and one hint that I can provide is that there will be some connections to a legacy character. A legacy character that I must add who loves to say hello there, haha. <laughs> But seriously, I think that what makes Stephen Knight so special is that he is picking up some of the original ideas that J.J. had for Seven and where that was supposed to go for my character and her backstory. So this is going to be answering questions for her, as well as raising other questions as we will also be introducing new mysteries of Rey. Now, again... You guys may or may not recall this, but we talked about this, about how John and Dave in their post-Episode 9 series, which by the way is also going to feature Rey, but not as a main main character, but as a side character. It's going to mainly focus on the New Jedi Order, or the next generation of Jedi, roughly 25 years after Episode 9, placing it 10 years after the Stephen Knight film, because that takes place 15 years later. So it's in that project that John and Dave are setting things up that Rey's mother is actually a descendant of Obi-Wan Kenobi's brother, and basically the father is the son of Emperor Palpatine. That's remaining as is, and their plan is to make her both a Palpatine and a Kenobi. Interesting, uh, I'm not quite sure how a lot of fans are going to like that, but we went over how John Favreau literally forced Joby Harold, the writer of the Kenobi series, he literally pushed him to have Ewan McGregor throw in a line of dialogue involving some kind of tease to do with Obi-Wan's brother. Now, there's no doubt about it that that is the reason as to why John Favreau pushed Joby Harold to write that line of dialogue for Ewan McGregor to present talking about it to a young version of Leia. So it's interesting to say the least because, yeah, I mean, he says, you know, I believe I had a brother, you know, I remember a baby's hand. He said something around those lines. And the fact that Favreau went out of his way to get you and McGregor to deliver that line of dialogue is interesting. I don't think it's a coincidence. I think it definitely is lined directly up with what's going on behind the scenes and with what Daisy is teasing right here. And so Stephen Knight is an admirer of J.J. Abrams' original work for Episode 7 when it came to Rey's identity and her plans uh, about who she was really going to be that never really fulfilled itself because things got reversed. 
Kathleen Kennedy basically lied to the audience. She said that Palpatine was always in the cards, and that Rey being a Palpatine was also always in the cards since 2014. And then JJ stepped in and said, no, this was a last minute change. So basically Kathleen Kennedy got caught red handed there. But on to the next, all right? So she goes on to elaborate further. I long remember JJ always wanted to do, to do something special with Rey's connection to Kenobi and Steven was always really inspired by that. And David Lindenoff, the original writer, also wanted to explore this area since he admired JJ's work on Seven and what didn't really come to fruition in Nine. So we are really providing more fun and guessing games for the audience again, so to speak, about who Rey really is and why she holds connections to those like Kenobi. And we are going to also be building more on Rey's parents that didn't get the best treatment in the films, nor the books, so that should be pretty fun as well. It's just so exciting to be back in the game again and communicating with fans. I hope to see everyone in 2025. It's going to be quite a ride. Now, take note that Daisy does not directly say that he is going to be related to Rey, all right? But she does say a connection. And this connection most certainly has a lot to do with, you know, what's being formed by John and Dave, by putting out that family tree book, by the way, that's gonna release in 2024, where basically Rey is in the list in conjunction with Kenobi's bloodline. The thing about this too that I think a lot of fans need to be aware of is the fact that Daisy also points out that, that she hopes to see everyone in 2025. Now, the fact that she says hopes is interesting because I think that might have a lot to do with the writer's, you know, whole situation, the whole, uh, at, you know, the whole actual problem that's happening right now, it's interesting because you have the writer's strike that's happening and it's really, it's really a difficult thing to pinpoint because he, Stephen Knight was just weeks away from finishing the script and it makes you pause and think for a moment, right? Like, exactly where is that going to go? What's going to happen with the script? How much longer is it going to be held off because of the writer's strike? What's going to happen with shows like Mando Season 4 since Jon Favreau is also revising the script? So that's also something to be a little, you know, concerned about there. Is the timeline going to shift when it comes to release dates? These are all questions that Star Wars fans alike are really asking right now endlessly. And so I think that may have also been another reason why at Star Wars Celebration, the Rey movie did not get an official release date year per se, but that's why Daisy says that she hopes to see fans in 2025. She's kind of low key saying like, yeah, this movie's intended to release that year, but we're just not quite sure just yet. So I don't really want to make anything concrete or jump to conclusions just yet. And so, you know, I think that it's interesting that Stephen Knight is going back to JJ's original treatment of who Rey was really supposed to be. Which by the way, yes, she was supposed to be Rey Kenobi in the very beginning. That's why Kenobi is speaking to Rey directly in The Force Awakens. This was an original plan, even JJ elaborated on this a couple of months ago, and it just never happened that way. Kathleen Kennedy wanted to find a way to justify her powers, basically, and Palpatine was the answer, so to speak. So, anyways guys, fill me in below in the comments what you all have to say about this, and if you guys did enjoy the content for today, make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel, and I will catch you guys next time.